name's Liz, I'm the baker that sews. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you are a subscriber. As always, it's really lovely to have you here as I share my sewing journey. So welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be all about some of my favourite patterns for autumn and winter. Um, I'd originally thought that this video would be all about my top five patterns, but actually when I started writing them all down, I found it really difficult to just stick to five. So I've tried to cover sort of all the bases. So I've got a jumper, I've got a pinafore dress and skirt pattern, I've got trousers, dungarees, um, I've said jumper, what else have I got? Cardigan skirt, pinafore trousers, jumper, dungarees, coatigan slash jacket and dress. So it's covering all aspects of what you might want to wear in the autumn and winter. Um, these are patterns that aren't just exclusive to autumn winter, but that is my focus for today's video. So I am wearing two of the patterns that I'm going to talk about, but I'll let you know what I'm wearing. I'm wearing one of my favourite jumper patterns. I've talked about these loads on my channel. It's the Nina Lee Southbank sweater. Um, so I've done the version that's cropped, but I've added the band and I'm going to talk about those different versions soon. It's got cuffs. One of my favourite things to do in autumn is do this and be all snuggly. And I really love the collar detail. This is in a um, really fun sort of dinosaur print that I got from Sumi Sunshine because I wear this jumper to work. And then I've got it on with the Tilly and the Buttons Bobby Pinafore dress. So it's a dungaree dress. It's got buttons going all the way down. Really lovely, deep, slanted pockets. And it's got a waistband. And then there are belt loops if you want to wear a belt. And then it's got, I hope my straps aren't twisted, but it's got straps that go across. It's quite fitted at sort of your um, waist. And then it stops just above your knee. So I've just got it on with tights, which is how I like to wear it in the autumn. And in the winter, I like to put on really thick woolly tights. This outfit would also work with a coatigan and it would also work with a cardigan as well. And I really love that you can pair the bobby pinafore dress um, with like a really warm snuggly jumper underneath as well. Um, and it works really well with the South Bank. So that's what I'm wearing. Where possible with lots of different patterns that I talk about, they're all patterns that I have made. Um, and that was really important for me when I was um, choosing what patterns to include for this video. There are so many patterns out there, but I didn't want to share a pattern that I haven't actually sewn up yet or worn in the autumn winter. So these are patterns that I have sewn up. I've got experience sewing them up, me wearing those so I can put images in throughout this video. I'll link all the patterns down below. I won't be able to link any of the fabrics, I'm afraid, because quite a lot of these makes are quite old. So I won't be able to link any of the fabrics that I used. I have got my trusty notebook, so if I do look down, it's because I've got some information in my notebook, particularly around sizes. Um, I've got most of the patterns printed, so I can show you them, but for a couple of them, I'll have to put in images of what they look like. So let's get started. The first pattern I wanted to talk about is a relatively new pattern to me. I did a collaboration with the lovely Becky, Notes from the Sewing Room, using this pattern. Sorry, my buckle keeps shining in the light. Um, I did a collaboration with Becky using this pattern. It was a relatively new pattern to me, but I know it's a pattern that's been out for a while and loads of people have got in touch to say that they absolutely love this pattern. So I'm gonna grab the pattern booklet. I'll show you one of the versions that I've sewn up. I've actually sewn up two and I have got plans to sew up a longer version of this cardigan. I think the look of the cardigan and the style of the cardigan lends itself really well to layering, which is why I've chosen this cardigan pattern. So the first pattern that I wanted to talk about is this one. It is the Pattern Emporium Grab a Cup of Cardi. And I really wanna sew up this version to so this longer length version. I've sewn up a couple of the cropped cardigans and I've got my version here. So I'll pop it on. Um, so as you can see, it's quite an oversized cardigan. So it works over the top of a South Bank sweater um, and actually goes nicely with the pinafore dress as well. With the Grab a Cup of Cardi, there are three different variations. I'm gonna have to take this off in a minute because I'm quite warm, but you've got this longer length one and then you've got this sort of hip length and then you've got a cropped version. I've sewn up um, this version. I thought it was the crop, but it's not it's this version. Um, this one I think would be perfect for the autumn winter. I think you could really wrap yourself in a really cozy, snuggly cardigan. And because it's quite an oversized look, it would go with quite a lot of your makes already. So I've worn this with dresses, worn it with blouses that have got really voluminous sleeves and it still works really well for that as well. And today I've got it on over the top of a South Bank sweater, um, which could potentially be quite chunky, but it really just makes you nice and cozy and warm. Um, it's a gorgeously oversized cardigan um, with the aim of you lounging around in it. 
Um, it's drafted to enable wearing layers underneath, including sweaters and jumper sleeves, and it features a dropped armhole, generous sleeves, and easy to fit cuffs. Again, in the autumn winter, I love anything that's got a cuff because you're going to be able to get yourself nice and snuggly and warm. I'm going to take this cardigan off now, but I've sewn up two, one in this sort of peachy colour and one in like a blue colour of rib knit fabric. Um, it can be sewn up in a range of fabrics. So they recommend, let me see what they recommend. Um, it's designed for stretch knit fabrics, both four way or two way stretch knits with vertical, vertical give work really well. Um, it's fabulously trans-seasonal and can be made in a bamboo, crochet-style knit or mesh for a spring-summer cover-up or a sweater knit, luxurious merino wool or thick rib knit for a cooler weather. So I've got this thick rib knit fabric and it definitely adds a layer of warmth. There are three different finished lengths, cropped, hip and long, so it's like mid-thigh length. V-neck with a wide band opening, fabulously full sleeve which is perfect for layering, easy fit cuff, wide banded hem band, you can either open or add buttons. I've chosen not to add buttons, but you could add buttons if you wanted to. And you can see that on some of the line drawings. These ones have all got buttons. Um, so if you wanted to make it even more snuggly, you could add buttons. Patch pockets on the hip and longer lengths. An easy short sleeve pattern hack. Um, so I really love that about the pattern. It's really versatile. There's lots of different options. You can have buttons, no buttons, lots of different options with pat with um there's lots of different options with pockets as well. And dependent on the fabric that you choose to use with this pattern, you'll get a very different look. And also you can make it last throughout all the different seasons. So that was my first pick thinking about autumn winter. So the next pattern I wanted to talk about is a free pattern and it is the Sabina skirt by the Little Pomegranate. And the reason I've picked this one is because again, I feel like you could really layer with this pattern. I've made quite a few versions. I've made one in a... Um, I think it's a viscose linen, which is like a navy, and it goes really nicely with things like the South Bank sweater. Also goes really nicely with a polo neck tucked in. Um, and then you can also pop on a cardigan as well. Works really well with tights and boots, but equally it works really well in the summertime too. So I'm just gonna grab the pattern so I can share it with you. Um, it's great, it's a free pattern, um, and it's got a really great size range as well. So it's aimed at beginners, um, and they suggest using woven fabrics. The sizes that the pattern comes in is size 6 to 34, so that's UK sizes. And it's a pattern by the Little Pomegranate, and it's called the Sabina Skirt. And I really love um, how it's been sort of styled here with that really lovely sort of oversized jumper tucked in. And this is perfect for like autumn and also for winter. I've paired mine with some really thick woolly tights and ankle boots um, with an oversized snuggly jumper. Equally, a sort of tight fitting jumper would work really nicely with the skirt as well. And then you could pop a cardigan on or another jumper over the top um, to add sort of layering. It also means that this skirt can work throughout all the seasons because you could wear it in the spring summer without tights and just with a t-shirt tucked in. I've also worn mine with a blouse tucked in as, to, as well. So, um, it's a gathered skirt which sits on your waist, designed for easy fitting. It's got an elasticated waistband, gentle shaping at the hips, roomy pocket and a ruffle hem. Um, it's been designed with beginners in mind. So the instructions have got loads of helpful tips and it's also a free pattern, which is amazing. In terms of fabric recommendations, they recommend light to medium weight woven fabrics. So fabrics that don't stretch like cotton, lawn, poplin shirt and seersucker and linen. Um, if you want a more drapey fabric, like a viscose rayon or tensile twill or crepe, it gives a more floatier look and a more fluid skirt. Um, this is the line drawing. It's got these really lovely slanted pockets um, and I just really love it. I really love the addition of this ruffle as well. It stops sort of just below your knee, sort of mid calf. It's a really lovely versatile pattern and it looks really different dependent on what fabric you use. This viscose fabric um, and that means that it's really drapey. Um, but let me just find, yeah. So you've got the elastic through all of the waistbands, the front, and the back and it creates that really lovely gathering this is just a green viscose with sort of black dots all over it and then you've got that ruffle at the bottom and then it's got these really gorgeous slanted pockets which are really deep as well so perfect for putting your tissues and lip balm and things in this works really nicely like i said with a jumper just tucked in or just over the top of it and I really, really love this skirt because it feels really stylish. And I just really love the length of this skirt and how it feels when you've got it on. You can dress it up or you can dress it down. Um, it's a really versatile pattern. 
So that's the second pattern I wanted to share with you today. And then on to the pattern that I'm wearing, which is the pinafore and skirt. So there's a couple of pinafores that sprung to mind. This one I've sewn up a few times. And what I really love about this one is that you can sew up a pinafore or you can sew up a skirt. And the pattern is the Bobby Pinafore and Skirt Pattern by Tilly and the Button. So here it is. This is the pattern. Um, so that's what it looks like on the front cover. And then on the back, you can see what it looks like as a skirt as well. So you can sew the pinafore and then it's got the straps at the back that cross over. Or you can just sew up the skirt. I've sewn up the skirt and I've also sewn up the pinafore a couple of times. In terms of sizes, it comes in a UK 6 to a UK 24. And in terms of fabric recommendations, they recommend medium to heavyweight woven fabrics that hold their, their shape, like a denim, corduroy, cotton canvas, drill, uh, tapestry or velvet. So I've used a corduroy fabric. And then the way that you construct it, if I just undo my buckle, is you line the bib and then also the pockets are lined. Um, it gives a really lovely shape. I like that it's quite fitted here. I'm going to struggle to fasten it up now. Um, I really love the fact that you can sew it up as a pinafore dress, but also as a skirt. I really like that you can get lots of different versions with the patterns, and I've tried to choose patterns where you've got a few different options um, when you buy the pattern. It comes in paper and PDF, um, and I've sewn it up in a denim, but I've also sewn it up in a corduroy. And again, it goes really nicely with jumpers underneath, t-shirts underneath I've worn it with my Anthea blouses and if I wore an Anthea blouse then I would definitely put a cardigan over the top of it um, I really like the shape of the pinafore dress and I really like the pockets as well and again it's really great for layering um, and it works really nicely um, with tights underneath and also ankle boots um, so this is a firm favourite for me in the autumn winter um, I like having pockets and things, especially when I'm at school. In terms of um, who this pattern is aimed at, it's aimed at confident beginners. Um, so I would highly recommend this pattern. It's a really enjoyable sew actually. There's quite a lot of top stitching and there's quite a lot of nice sort of slow processes to your sewing as well. Um, and it was fairly straightforward to put together. Tilly and the Buttons um, pattern instructions are always brilliant. So I would definitely recommend that one. That was pattern number three, thinking about autumn, winter. And then on to some trousers. So I have got a couple of trouser patterns that are a firm favourite for me in the autumn, winter. Um, the most obvious would be what I've been sewing up recently, was, which is the Anna Allen Persephone pants. But when I was putting this video together, I wanted to try and include patterns where possible that had a range of sizes. So I've actually gone for another firm favourite of mine. I haven't sewn it up recently, but I did sew it up quite a lot last autumn winter. And it's a pattern by Nina Lee and it's the Portobello trousers. So again, I've got the pattern and I've also got a version here just to share with you. But with all of these patterns, I'll put in images of the versions that I've sewn up so you can see what it looks so like. So here is the pattern. Um, and this is what they look like. They're a high-waisted trouser um, and they've got this sort of really fitted but quite narrow waistband. They've got a zip in the back and also a button on the waistband. They're quite wide fitted and they have got pockets. The Portobello trousers come in two different size bandings, so a 6 to 20 or a 16 to 28. They're a simple, simple and elegant high-waisted trouser that are really easy to sew. They come together really quickly and they work in a variety of fabrics for all year round comfort. So you can make them in a lightweight wool and you'll work ready in the winter. Linens and rayons will keep you cool and effortlessly chic in the summer. They're constructed with front pleats and back darts and a centre back concealed zip, um, along with all important inseam pockets. So in terms of suitable fabrics, they recommend light to medium weight woven fabrics, ideally with some drape, like a crepe, linen, chambray rayon, lightweight wool, cotton lawn and velvet. You do need a nine inch concealed zip and also a button. So my, probably my favourite pair are these sort of gorgeous, um, kind of like a mauve colour, sort of purpley pink. Um, and you can see, if I stand up, you'll be able to see some of the detail on the pockets. So they're very high-waisted. They come to sort of here. You can see the pleats on the front. And then they've got in-seam in pockets just here. And then at the back, you've got these really gorgeous um, darts. And then you've got the concealed zip. And then it's finished with a button. Um, they are quite wide-legged. If I hold up the trouser leg, you'll be able to see that there's quite a lot of volume in the trousers. 
um, and they are very high waisted. You'll see in the pictures that I put in. Um, they come together really quickly. They're a really straightforward pattern to sew and they're not too fiddly to sew either, considering that they are a trouser pattern. I think because you've got that concealed zip at the back, there's no fiddly fly or anything um, and they're really easy to fit. I would highly recommend the Portobello trousers. They're a pattern that I've sewn up time and time again and they are really comfortable to wear as well. So that was my next pattern I wanted to share with you. On to a jumper pattern. And again, it's one that I'm wearing. It's one that I've talked about absolutely loads um, on my channel. I just absolutely love this pattern. And it is the Nina Lee South Bank sweater and also sweater dress. I've sewn up a couple of the sweater dresses recently and they are so brilliant for keeping warm in the autumn winter when the weather's a little bit chilly. Again, pop on some thick woolly tights, um, ankle boots or trainers and you're good to go and they keep you really snuggly and warm. And I can vouch for staying nice and warm whilst wearing the sweater dress and also whilst wearing the sweater because I've worn this. This is like my staple wardrobe um, to work in the autumn winter when it gets a little bit chilly. Um, I really love the high sort of collar detail. I really love the cuff detail. It's slightly looser fitting than maybe um, something like a Tilly and the Buttons Freya jumper, which is why I like it. There's a little bit more room in the South Bank sweater. There are three different versions. So you can sew up version one, which is a sweater dress. Now, just to say the sweater dress has an option to put pockets in. I don't like putting pockets in. I feel like the pockets are a little bit too low. I could raise the pockets, um, but I've also found with the pockets, I don't tend to put anything in them because I feel like they sort of get, the pockets sort of get dragged down depending on what I'm putting in my pockets. Because it's a sweater dress made from a knit fabric, I feel like that fabric just pulls ever so slightly. So I don't actually put in pockets for the sweater dress. I prefer the silhouette without the pockets. Version two is a hip length jumper and you have a hemband on it. And then version three is a cropped jumper and it stops at your natural waist. That's my preferred length, but what I tend to do, or what I always do when I'm sewing up version three, is I put the hemband on and then it stops just at my hip. That's where I prefer the jumper to finish. It comes in two sizes, so size band six to 20 or 16 to 28. And in terms of fabric, they recommend medium weight knit fabric with 20% stretch. So a ponty or sweatshirt fabric. This is a cotton jersey and it works perfectly for the South Bank sweater. Um, I have sewn, I've probably lost count of how many jumpers I've sewn. The jumper goes brilliantly with trousers, it goes brilliantly with skirts, it goes brilliantly with um, pinafore dresses, it goes brilliantly underneath, um, I was going to say yantas, but it does go brilliantly underneath yantas. Um, it goes great with dungarees. It's just a really versatile jumper pattern. I really love sewing it up comes together fairly quickly and it is perfect for adding a little bit of warmth to your autumn winter wardrobe. So that was pattern number five. I've only got a few more patterns to go. The next one is probably my favourite dungaree pattern. Again, I've talked about this loads on my channel. Um, I've sewn quite a few versions, I think probably five or six versions or maybe more than five or six versions. I'll put some pictures in of my versions that I've sewn up, but it's the Helen's Closet Yanta overalls. I really love Helen's Closet patterns. They really hold your hand when you're sewing. They're perfectly written, um, really clear and really simple. And I love the Yantas as well. They're slightly oversized in their fit. There is an option to um, make them a slightly closer fit and you just put in a side zip. I haven't needed to do that with any of my versions. Um, my favourite and most worn pair are probably these black corduroy Yanta overalls. They're not going to show up at all. Um, and in the instructions, they recommend doing a buttonhole on the strap and then having a button on the bib. But I prefer to close all of my Yantas with dungaree clips and dungaree buttons. Um, it's a really lovely pattern, works really well in a range of fabrics as well. So I'm going to go into detail about the pattern, but I cannot speak more highly of the Yanta overalls pattern. I absolutely love it. And again, it's a pattern where you can sew up a couple of versions. So you can do the full length ones or you can do the shorts version. I'm yet to do the shorts version, but I think that would be a really cute summer pattern. Um, so I might sew that up in the summertime when the weather gets a bit warmer. So in terms of sizes, it comes in sizes 0 to 30. So they describe the Yanta overalls as a laid back artistic style overall with a comfortable fit through the waist, hips and legs. The overalls have classic features like a V-shaped back and a pointed chest pocket. 
The Yanta straps are secured using buttons. Make your Yanta overalls cropped or summery shorts. Um, both views have front and back patch pockets and Yanta is comfortable, modern and fun to sew. So they are slightly cropped. I just lengthen mine so that they're not cropped. So this is the slightly cropped version and then this is the shorts version for the summertime. In terms of fabric recommendations, they recommend medium to heavyweight woven fabrics like a cotton twill, denim up to 10 ounces, linen, corduroy and canvas. Crisp, lightweight fabrics like a cotton and lightweight linen can also be used for warmer weather overalls. And I would say that would be more for sort of spring, summertime. You can use a more drapey fabric like a tensile twill, wool crepe or linen viscose slub if you want to experiment with a softer, less structured look. But this is what they look like. So this is the front with that pointed patch pocket on the front. And then you've got pockets at the front and then you've also got pockets on the back. And then you've got this lovely sort of um, strap detail at the back. Um, and like I said, lots and lots of different pocket options. And then this is the short version and this is the slightly cropped um, but I just lengthen them so that they're not slightly cropped. And I've sewn them up in corduroy, I've sewn them up in denim, and I've sewn them up in a canvas fabric. So they're really versatile in terms of what fabric you can use as well. So I'd highly recommend the Yanta overalls. So the next pattern, I'm kind of cheating with pattern number seven because I've got two patterns to talk to you, but this is thinking more like an oversized outer layer. So one of them could be classed as a cardigan um, and the other one, it depends on what fabric you choose to use for this as to whether you have more of a cardigan look or you have more of a sort of jacket look. So the first pattern is a sew over it pattern and it's the Jessie Cotigan. So I'm just going to get the instructions out to show you. This is a really lovely oversized sort of chunky, I wouldn't even say it's a cardigan, but it, it feels very much like a jacket, but dependent on the fabric that you choose to use, depends on what it actually looks like. But here is what it looks like. So it's the Jessie Cotigan by Sew Over It. So the Jessie Cotigan is described as a warm unlined jacket that's um, designed to be outerwear. It's a cross between a coat and a cardigan, and it's got a swing shape to the jacket, a shawl collar, drop shoulders and then really deep pockets. Um, this is the version that I've sewn up using this really gorgeous like knit, uh, kind of like a knit wool fabric that I got from Fabric Godmother in this sort of um, tartany effect, I guess, fabric. Um, so you'll be able to see, it's got this really lovely sort of oversized shawl detail. You can see that the um, it's got a dropped shoulder it has got really lovely roomy pockets and it is designed to be sort of snuggly and warm. There's no actual fastenings on the coatigan, but you can, if you want to, use like a belt to secure it fastened. I don't tend to. Um, I really love how oversized it is and how chunky it is and how snuggly and warm it can be as well. And they recommend a wool fabric, which I think would create a really lovely, warm, cosy coatigan. Because of the fabric that I've chosen to use with this, it's like more of a knit fabric. It has got stretch to it. This gives more of a cardigan sort of vibe to it. But I think if you use the wool, it would definitely give more of an outerwear layer. So that was the first pattern that I wanted to talk about in terms of outerwear. And then the other pattern is a pattern I've sewn recently in a really lovely chunky fur lined corduroy fabric. And I've seen so many gorgeous shacket type um versions of this pattern sewn up in like a flannel fabric which is quite a thick bouncy fabric i'd love to get some flannel fabric and sew sort of a longer version of this pattern it's the friday pattern company ilford jacket um, and this comes in two versions you can sew a fairly cropped one or you can sew a longer version um, the Ilford jacket is a versatile style that's modular design makes it simple yet impactful. It features drop shoulders and comes with two sleeve options, a placketed sleeve with cuff and an easy to sew boxy sleeve for a more relaxed vibe. It also includes two lengths as well as a bunch of pocket templates that you can mix and match. It's a fun skill building pattern that you will want to make and wear again and again. And it's also unisex. Um, it comes in sizes extra small up to 7X. So in terms of fabric recommendations for the Ilford, it's designed for wovens and can be made from a wide range of fabrics. For a boxier look, go for a lightweight canvas, linen, denim or corduroy. It looks also looks amazing in a drapey woven. When sewn up in a flannel, it's the perfect autumn layering piece. The design lines of this pattern are simple enough that you have room to experiment with fabrics you may not have worked with before. So that was true of my most recent version 
of this pattern i've sewn up this gorgeous um well using this absolutely gorgeous chunky corduroy fabric that's got fur in, on one side so it's corduroy on one side and fur on the other and i've sewn up a really lovely ilford i've gone for the shorter length one but it's not i mean when you say shorter length it's not like cropped so if i stand up you'll be able to see that actually it stops at the bottom of the pockets of this pinafore dress and then I've added really deep pockets that I've turned over so you can see some of the fur. And then I've just gone for jeans buttons on this. And then you've got that really gorgeous collar detail as well. And this is just going to be a really perfect addition to my autumn wardrobe. And um, just as a little layering piece. And because it's fur lined, it's going to make me nice and snuggly and warm. And actually, I think it would go over the South Bank and um, with this bobby pinafore that I've got on as well. I'm going to take it off now though because it's quite warm in here okay the final pattern that i've got for you is a dress pattern and i found it really hard to narrow it down to one dress pattern and the reason i've gone for this dress pattern is because it is quite a versatile pattern i've sewn it loads i think i've probably got about eight or nine of this dress in my wardrobe it's a dress that works all year round the instructions are really straightforward and hold your hand and um, it can look really lovely and smart because it's part shirt dress so you've got the shirt on the top and then a lovely gathered skirt on the bottom. Um, you've also got the option for pockets, which is a win in my book. And it comes in sizes 6 to 34. And the pattern that I'm talking about is the Tilly and the Buttons Lyra shirt dress. They describe it as an ultra cool shirt dress that has an oversized blousy bodice with bust darts, button front opening, two piece collar and stand. And of course, side seam pockets. The gathered skirt can be hemmed just above the knee or add to the midi panel for a trendy tiered look. Choose between short sleeves for an easy breezy summer style or full length billowy sleeves with elasticated cuffs. And that just adds an extra layer of coziness um, for sort of the autumn winter. It's also a pattern that I think would work with something like the grab a cup of cardi. I think that would work really nicely over the longer sleeves and also over the shorter sleeves. I think it's also a dress that you could put like a frayer top underneath, so a really fitted mock turtleneck long sleeve top. So you've got an extra layer of warmth. And I think a coatigan would go really nicely with it too. Um, I've worn this throughout the year. So I've worn it in the summer with no tights, but I've also worn it in the autumn winter with tights and it works just as well with tights as well. Um, so these are the line drawings, if you can see them. So you've got that midi length one with the long sleeves. Um, you've got midi length here with the short sleeves and then you've got knee length with the short sleeves or knee length with the long sleeves. In terms of the fabric recommendations, they recommend light to medium weight woven fabrics like a cotton lawn, voile, seersucker, chambray, double gauze, viscose, tensile, or a needle cord, so a lighter weight needle cord. I have got some lighter weight needle cord in my stash and I would really like to sew up um, a needle cord version for the autumn winter. I think that would be really lovely. And I think, again, it would go with a cardigan and with tights and ankle boots. I really love this pattern. It comes together really nicely. And again, the Tilly and the Buttons patterns really hold your hand. This is aimed at improvers. But actually, I think if you're a confident beginner and you've sewn quite a few things and you're up for a challenge, I would definitely recommend this. Um, it's fiddly in terms of that two-piece collar and also the placket. There's quite a lot of gathering if you go for this version. But actually, the instructions are brilliant and they really explain every step and really hold your hand as well. There's a blog post to go with this. I don't know if there's a video, but if there is, I'll link it down below as well. But I'd really recommend this pattern. Again, it's another pattern that you could wear all year round. And there are a couple of different options um, dependent on that skirt length and also dependent on the sleeve length as well. So that was just a few of my favourite patterns for autumn winter. There are so many more patterns that I could have gone into detail about, um, especially dress patterns and also blouse patterns. I didn't cover any blouses, actually. Um, if I was going to suggest a blouse, I would recommend the Nina Lee um, Bakerloo blouse. And again, that's a pattern where you can sew up the dress, but you can also sew up a blouse. And that's got a really gorgeous collar detail to it. Um, I'll pop a link down below to the Bakerloo and I'll put an image in of my Bakerloo blouse and also a dress so you can see what it looks like. Um, but that is another dress slash blouse pattern which would work well for spring, summer, but also autumn and winter. Let me know what your favourite autumn winter pattern is down below. I hope you've enjoyed hearing what some of my favourite patterns are for autumn winter and seeing some of them made up. 
If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would really love it if you could hit that subscribe button. You get notified of when I bring out my next video. Thank you as always for watching. Take care and I'll be back soon with another video. Bye.